So this video is a follow-up to my Epsilon Delta definition of a limit video, and I wanted to work a simple example with you and so you can see how you can apply some of those concepts. So in this example, um, we're given a function f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. And so the first part of the question asks us to find the limit as x goes to minus 3 of f of x. And then the second part of the question is going to have us use that definition. So it's asking us for c, which is our limit point, equal to minus 3. Find delta such that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, and they want us to fix the epsilon at point zero 0.02. So they want that distance between the limit point and the functional value to be less than point 0.2, and we've got to find the appropriate um, interval on the x-axis around minus 3 so that that will happen. Okay, so let's look at the first part of the problem. The first part of the problem asks us to actually evaluate the limit because we're going to need that L for the second part of the problem. So I'm looking at the limit as x goes to minus 3 of x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. If we simply plug in minus 3, we'll see that we get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. So we know that we're going to have to use some other technique. And so we're going to factor that numerator. Once we factor that numerator, the x plus 3 terms cancel. And now I have the limit as x goes to minus 3 of x minus 3. I can evaluate that by now plugging in minus 3. And so minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6. So this tells us this is the limit as x goes to minus 3 of x squared minus 9 over x plus 3 is equal to minus 6. And this is going to be um, the L that we're going to use for the second part of the problem. So in the second part of the problem, recall that we're asked to find um, the delta such that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, which we've been asked to set epsilon in this particular problem to be 0 0.02. So we're given that the absolute value of f, minus, f of x minus l, um, we know that that's going to be equal to, once we plug in the f of x, that's x squared minus 9 over x plus 3, and that's minus our limit l, which was minus 6. And that must be less than 0 0.02 because that's the epsilon they've asked us to use in this problem. So we simplify, and then we get that x minus 3 plus 6 has to be that absolute value of that, has to be less than 0 0.02. And remember, we're working to try to find out what the delta is going to be for our x-axis. So we can continue to simplify. And so if we do that, we get that x plus 3, which is equal to, and you see here I've written it as, x minus c because our c, if you recall, was the minus 3. So this right here is our c, right? So I've written that as x minus c. That's why I've got the minus minus there. And that has to be less than 0 0.02. So what that tells us is that this right here, if you recall from our example in our previous video, this is the distance on the x-axis, and that's what we're looking for. So what does this tell us? This tells us that that point zero 0.02 is going to be our delta. Now, in this particular example, it turned out that the delta and the epsilon were the same, but we certainly shouldn't expect that. That all comes out in the wash as we work the problem. But here we know that if x is within point zero 0.02 of minus 3, then y has to be within point zero 0.02 of minus 6. And this is how you can actually apply the definition to a real problem. 